Hello, it's good to have you join us again for your favorite program coming to you from NTA2 Lagos Network Center. And we are not going to be surprised if you are joining us from all over the world because we know that this program is one of the best you like to watch because of the guests we normally unveil. So you can have a conversation, an enriching conversation with our guests and see how the story of Nigeria, how the narrative about our country Nigeria can actually position Nigeria as one of the greatest nations on the face of the earth. Now, the question remains, is that just a pipe dream or a real desire? Well, we have decided to invite again into the studio yet another distinguished Nigerian. This time around, one of my senior colleagues, I'm not going to reveal to you too much about him yet, but the fact is that uh, we both anchored a program that actually looked at how the next generation of Nigerians would take responsibility for this country, that is Young World, also on this station, NTA network. And um, incidentally, he, well, he did not just disappear from here. He decided to carry his bag like Andrew and uh, crossed over to the other side of the world. But now he says to himself, no, 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 I've got to go back home and see what is happening back home. So we're going to be looking at how a journalistic journey can help us define leadership roles, help us define responsibility, help us define citizenship, help us define the truth about nationhood. It is important that we have all these questions to be answered. And we like to say on this show, the conversation is about you. So get your paper and your Bible ready so that when he's speaking, you can take down your notes, and then when the telephone lines are open, you can be part of the conversation. But don't go anywhere yet. Let's see if we can get a tip of the iceberg on who our guest is today. Super-fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel. Live more. Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. All right, it's great that you have joined us now. You have met our guests. Incidentally, I'm sure that uh, many of you, you can almost reconnect with Professor T. That's why I call him, fondly, I call him Professor T because he's uh, very versatile and he's uh, one of uh, 
most consummate conversationalists we have had in this industry. So it's my pleasure to welcome on your behalf onto Close Flow our guest for today, Professor T. Thank you. We give thanks and praise and glory to the all wise, all powerful, ever present, gracious, merciful God. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for a magnificent introduction that you have done for us. We are gratified to be back home after 41 years. We started working here in NTA 41 years ago and today a day for love and a day for lovers mm. all over the world. Uh, Jesus Christ. Anabi Isa in Arabic. Jesu Christi in Yoruba. Yes. Jesus Cristo in Spanish. Said in all the three holy books. The Torah, the Bible, and the Quran in the scripture. Two very important commandments, Torah, Sharia. One, reverently fear Almighty God, hmm. Allah, Jehovah. Two, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yoruba, Ijo, Ibo, Hausa, Nupe, Kalaba, Black, white, Spanish, colored, it doesn't matter. Every human being created by Almighty God is your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. In this day of Valentine all over the world, we urge each and every Nigerian, love this great country called Nigeria for God so loved Nigeria that he gave Nigeria everything. The most blessed nation on earth. United States of America, the best nation on earth. But Nigeria, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Nigeria the most blessed nation on earth. Okay, well, don't let that. Uh, it's going to buy you over because all of you are already getting converted. <laughs> That's what he does. I told you, he's a consummate compositionalist. He's not just... Uh, gifted at what he's doing is actually blessed to be what but that we are going to be looking at a global cooperation yes for peace and security matters yes he has already given us the foundation love that's the key and love yourself as you love your neighbor is very important that's how to secure your living environment yes now so let's come back to it yes so coming back to home now suddenly yes and you're seeing the spate of uh, banditry kidnapping killings ritual murders how did that sit with you? Well, you see, this is what we have been preaching now for decades, telling Nigerians that prevention is better than cure. What we have been preaching now for decades is exactly what the Pope, the Catholic Pope, said a few months ago during the Christmas uh, event that he was preaching in Rome. Yeah. And what are those? Three key words. Please, thank you, I'm sorry. Three key words. Three key words. One, please. Second, thank you. Then third, I'm sorry. If every Nigerian, from the leadership down to the followers, each and every one of us can say, please, thank you, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. All these killings and banditry and robbery and hatred will disappear just like this. But mankind cannot seem to find themselves, to humble themselves. When God said in the scripture, if my people hmm. who oh. are called by my name hmm. can humble themselves uh, before they call in prayer, I will answer them. Okay, now um, I said to you in the introduction that uh, Mr. T, Professor T, is actually a journalist. Actually, he used to be, but before uh, he was here, then I took over. Yes. Some years back, okay? Yes. Now, um, let, let's look at the role of the media. Yes. In how this percept, perce, perception and perspectives 
have been embraced in this country. Right now, we, I think it's ethnocentrism. Yes. We think more from the ethnic side than from the Nigerian side. So yes. what, what, what could have been the reason for this? Well, again, we, the media, we have a fourth estate. Of, of, yes, of the realm. Uh, yes. Of the realm. So we have a lot of responsibilities in our shoulders, on our shoulders. God Almighty, Allah, Jehovah, will not come down to do anything for us. He has given us everything. Hmm. So now, as a media guru, you and I, we owe the people of this great nation and the people all over the, the world, world to educate them the proper way and moral way of living their lives. We must not, I repeat, go to a house of worship just to sing and clap our hands and pray and fast alone. Mm -mm. We must roll up our sleeves and walk. The Creator walked for six but days and rested on the seventh day. But we Nigerians want to just pray and fast. And not walk. Yes. So we must change that aspect of our lives. Each and every one of us, I'm gratified to see you today still holding forth right here where I left, where I started 41 years ago. Everything that I am today, this house made me who I am. And I am proud to be back home and to join you in this great work that you are doing giving the people education. And this is what the entire Nigerian masses need right now. Re-education, rebranding ourselves, especially, most especially, the leaders. Come out from your offices, roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty. Mm, do not just enjoy the office alone. You are there for the people. You are the servant of the people, not the master of the people. Oh, great. Act like it. Great. Now that you have emphasized that, that issue came up uh, with some of one of our guests that we had here before. Yes. So public officers are actually servants of the people. And Absolutely. Not, but they don't like to be called public servants. Uh -huh. Absolutely. If you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself a Muslim, or you call yourself a Jew. Well, another Isa in the Quran, Jesus Christ in the Bible, said to lead, you must serve. Mm. To lead the people, you are the servant of the people. And every office that you are holding, look at we are talking now, I said 41 years ago I was here, but I'm no longer here. Mm. So every office you hold, it says, yes, temporary office. What legacy are you going to leave for the people? We had Saudana of Sakwato, Sir Hakmad Dubello. We have Sir Namdi Azikiwe, and then we had Obafemi, Chief Obafemi Awolowo. These three men left a huge legacy. So it's now left for us, you and I, to leave a greater legacy by helping the people you are put in the office to make this great nation greater. Okay, now, let's come back to, because you have that, that is the, 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 the linchpin now. Yes. Leadership. Yes. Um, you are almost even known as uh, the author of leadership. Yes, I am. Okay, now, now, so, yes. um, what are the pointers yes. or what are the qualifiers that will let us know somebody who is aspiring to, to occupy an office if he has the capacity to lead? Uh, what, what are the good? I'm gratified you asked that question. My book, Leadership, written in 1995, I might add, has all the details and the recipes for being a leader. Now, I give you a, a, a simple example. Every leader that you see today that calls themselves a leader, you must lead by example. Yes, hmm. if you are a leader, in every ramification, even in your home, as a father, as a husband, as a mother, as a wife, you are leading. That's why they say all politics is local. 
So if you are a leader, what television station are you watching in Nigeria? Are you watching a foreign television station or you are watching NTA, the largest television station in the entire Africa, to know the problems of your people so that you can solve the problems? Every leader is a solution to a problem. Every problem is crying for a solution. And so for decades now, we are saying no good roads in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. No, no light, no yes. infrastructure. Uh, but where are the leaders? Roll up your sleeves and walk for the benefit of these people called Nigerians, the citizens who put you in the office. Yes, we have an election cycle coming up now. Yes. Now, every leader that brings himself or herself forth, because I need to say that, himself or herself. Yes. In yes. the scripture, yes. women have been known to lead the, their nations to greatness. So we must not sideline women. Hmm. I like that. We have 70% of Nigerians who are women. Who told you that they cannot be president? Where is it written in the constitution that the, the presidency is meant for only a man? man? Nowhere is it written that way. I have read the Nigerian constitution back and forth. Every human being that says they are a citizen of this great nation, most especially women, because women have four eyes. They can see better than we men. Yes, it's scriptural. Women can see. Women have empathy. Women have compassion better than we men. So any woman, if you're listening to the voice out, my voice out there, and you want to lead this great nation, Step Come forth. Step forth. Make a change. We are looking for good people that will lead this nation back to where it used to be, why it was called Giant of, of Africa. Africa. Okay, all right. Um, I must give you, um, I, should, I should doff my heart to you. Thank you, that. my brother. Uh, that's, that's beautifully uh, captured. But as a professional yes. international speaker yes. and as, as a consultant, you, yes. you, you are going around the world. Yes. So, how did they do it outside of Nigeria? What exactly, what, what, what was the magic wand that made those countries, those nations, and those people to suddenly become, I mean, look at Dubai. Yes. Dubai is just about 50 years old, yes. and now many Nigerians are running to Dubai either yes. to go and walk or to go and... So what happened? Now, uh, look, excellent question. Fascinating question you ask. The key for all those countries is a leader with vision. vision. A leader who thinks about tomorrow, the legacy for tomorrow, not thinking about today, the stomach, and the past. Leaders who think about tomorrow, vision for tomorrow, visionaries. That's what made those countries what they are today. Mm. Here, all we think about is our stomach. We don't want to walk. We want to go to prayer houses and fast and pray. Now, all this religion that we are studying, that today God has bestowed it upon us to preach peace all over the world with the three holy books. Each and every nation, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the United States of America, key nations who believe in Christendom, Islam, and Judaism. The key to their success is not prayer and fasting, Yes, the key to their success is work, work, and hard work, and hard work. That is why they're successful. So, all the prayer houses in Nigeria, I'm a preacher, I'm not criticizing anybody, I don't point fingers. We are here to solve Nigeria's problems. But I'm urging you, if you are a preacher out there, tell your congregants, labor, work, it's not a curse, it's a blessing. And favor comes after hard work. Teach your congregants that and see the manifest, crystal clear change that will come to this great nation. And almighty God, Allah, Jehovah, will smile and say, yes, this is the country that I love the most, that I give everything. Now, it, it's amazing the way you have been able to capture the three uh, uh, religious groups, the Abrahamic faith, yes. you know, being one single swell. Yes. Because the way you say God, the way you say, you know, uh, Allah, Allah and Jehovah. Jehovah. 
Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's really you know, stimulating. Now, but the, the, the truth is that here, mm -hmm. there's so much digression or so much division or so much, you know, between the three religions. Yes. You know, people are, seem to be so extreme. Mm -hmm. So where did we get it wrong? Are we, are we misinterpreting what the books are saying? Uh, you got it wrong, simple, with this very statement in all three holy books. Almighty God, Allah, Jehovah said, and we quote, My people perish due to a lack of knowledge. Hmm. A people without understanding shall stumble, fall, and come to ruin. That's exactly what's happening in Nigeria. How would you, a Muslim, say you hate a Christian? Hmm. How would you, a Christian, Christian, say you hate a Muslim? When all religion is one, the Quran is Arabic word for reminder. Mm. Reminder. Reminder of what? Reminder of the two previous books before the Quran. Reminder of the Torah. Reminder of the Bible. In the Quran, Jesus Christ is more spoken about than any other. In the Quran, it says Jesus Christ will come back again to judge and rule mankind. So if that is clear, manifest, crystal clear, why will we be hating one another? And that problem is lack of knowledge. 99.9% .9 of Christians that we have got in touch with do not read the Bible, mm. but they mm. go to church mm. every Sunday. 99.9% mm. .9 of Muslims all over have not read the Quran, but they go to mosque, mosque every Friday. <laughs> The key now is to retrace our steps, read your holy books. Then you will know that we are all serving one God, Allah, Jehovah, along in Yoruba. Yes. Oni in my language, Ijo. Yes. Oselabwa in Esa. Yes. Anedo. Anedo. Eh? Chuku in Igbo. On and on different languages. So, God is constant. Let me tell you a fascinating story. If you go to Israel today, you arrive in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, and you say God from now to eternity, nobody will turn and look at you. But the, mem the moment you say Jehovah, they'll stop what they are doing. Who said that name? Jehovah in Hebrew. God in English. Allah in Arabic. So what is the force about, if not just lack of knowledge? Okay, leadership, quality governance, and political responsibility are measurable goals. Yes. Okay? For true patriots, for nation building. Yes. We don't seem to have such visionaries yes. around here. And that seems to seem to be where the story of Nigeria again is. Uh, so how do we get our people to understand that these are the factors which we must imbibe to let true leadership prevail in this country. Now, leadership, you must lead by example. example. Good example. Not just, Ooh. yes, good example. Because again, I keep going back to the scripture. The scripture, it says, on the day of resurrection, it's not those who are calling Jesus, 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 Jesus huh? will come with him <laughs> uh, to eternity. No. Those who have done good deeds. Hmm. And so, you and I sitting here today, 41 years later, do you think for one moment, if I had any bad deeds, hmm. Hmm. Way, way, back. way back, would you want me here? And so, it is your good deeds as a leader that follows you everywhere. Not your house, not your property, not your cars, not your money, not your wives, your husbands, or your children. Your good or your bad deeds. So every leader that wants to lead in this great nation, mm. roll up your sleeves and do good for the people of this great nation. Okay, now let's, let's come back again to the street level. Yes. Because the, one of the questions, or one of the issues, uh, you mentioned a little bit of it, knowledge, understanding, you know, proper information and all that. Uh, followership 
in this part of the world is almost beggarly. Yes. It's almost servile. So, is it because of impoverishment or because of lack of proper education? Now, I, I will not want to use that uh, poverty as an excuse. Lack of education, yes, but not poverty. Every rich man that you see today was poor yesterday. Mm. Mm. Elon Musk, the richest man in the world today, was poor yesterday. Poverty is not an excuse. Lack of education mm. is the excuse. And so we must educate mm. our people the right and moral way to do things, all right? Just like you have your telephones today, you are always upgrading your telephone system and your apps. The same way we must upgrade our system of education. And it brings me to a, a point I want to make again all over the world. In Nigeria, all we do is complain. Pointing fingers. Yes, complain for decades. But you don't see anybody bringing solutions. <laughs> we are in the solution business. And one of the solutions that we are talking about is, is this poverty scenario that you're talking about. Yes. If you are a policy maker, for example, and you want people to open bank accounts in the banks in Nigeria, you are urging them to come with utility bills. <laughs> Do you know if they are working? Do you know if they even have power <laughs> or any utility in their houses? Who makes these laws? <laughs> in the United States of America, you want to open a bank account, all you need is a valid identification. <laughs> Same thing, I have to give kudos to all our armed forces of Nigeria, all our men and women of the armed forces of this great nation, Nigeria, including the customs, police, immigration, etc. But again, in the policy of immigration, when you say people should apply for a passport, international passport, you're asking them to bring NIN number, BVN number, uh, that paper, uh, this paper. So before, because they can't get it now, you see people doing things fraudulently to get mm. all these things. So if you are a policy maker and you are listening to us today, why don't you review all those policies? Make sure things are easy for your people. For your things, citizens. Yes, for your citizens. Because things are easy for people in America. That's why everybody's running away and going abroad. Here you are making things difficult for your own citizens. That must end. Review all these policies. We are taking nothing away when we leave. Only our good deeds. Review your policies for the good people of Nigeria. Let there be peace in this great nation called Nigeria. Because again, it comes to a favorite song of mine, the great Sonny yes. He says, whatever you do, allow peace to reign. We want peace in Nigeria. Every conflict we are having all over the world now, people are clamoring for peace. So we want peace in this great nation called Nigeria, so you and I can sleep with our two eyes closed instead of both eyes open. Okay, uh, open your eyes, don't close your eyes. Uh, uh, Professor Tony is not going yet. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Just like I said to us, uh, we are going to be part of uh, this conversation. When we come back, we're going to have the dedicated lines either you want to make a voice call so that can, you can enjoy the beauty of his voice or <laughs> you just want to get um, the message across quickly so he can respond to your queries or your comments. Just stay with us. We'll be back shortly. We must dilate the eyes for the, for the behalf cataract, look at the back of the eyes, the glaucoma, you know, to do a full workup for them. You will remember the giant stripe they will make the eyes. You will, you will, you will remember with your stage. It's going to be looking deeper than we ever looked in before to ensure that um, we, we close all the loopholes. Every edition is an arresting conversation with distinguished Nigerians from various strata of the society bearing their minds on how we can realize the Nigeria of our dreams. Join us live on Close Flow Monday every week here on NTA2 Lagos Network Center. Close Flow 
The conversation is about you. Thank you for staying with us. We still have, uh, well, I call him Prof. Professor Tun Eyatado with us. He's still here. He's, uh, you can see, very exuberant, very passionate. When it comes to Nigeria, he's all consummate about how this country should or can be better than what it is. Now, so 40 years back. Yes. Are you in this studio now? Yes. So, what's the takeaway? Are you, are you, is it a painful takeaway or is it... Uh, well, the takeaway I have is like everything that I've been saying about Nigeria for decades now. Um, places that I used to live in Nigeria, where the roads were good, they are now horrible. Hmm. Telephone line system. Dead. You're making a phone call and say there is a network problem. I've been hearing about network problem now for de decades on and on, yet no solution. The takeaway here, uh, it almost brings me to tears. I love Nigeria. I wish you can open my heart and see it. Mm. Mm. I love God and this great country called Nigeria. But it breaks my heart that my people do not know how to maintain anything. Mm. Not even their own bodies. Mm. Nigerians don't know how to give any maintenance. How would you build a house like this and watch it crumble? And blame everybody else. Blame the government. Blame this. But not taking responsibility mm. yourself. Mm. We are calling on all Nigerians. Everything that is bad in this country is the fault of myself and you. Nobody else will fix this country except you and I. You can complain all you want. We are calling them now CNC, complainers in chief. Complain all you want for another hundred years. It won't move until you roll up your sleeves and walk like Fola and I. We have been walking and we will continue to walk. Again, back to the scripture. Uh, Jesus Christ never said he was doing miracles. Another Isaiah never said he's doing miracles. He said, I'm doing work. I'm doing the work that my father has sent me. My father, Jesus Christ said, is still walking. Mm. 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 Read your scripture. You'll be amazed. Nigerians, we must walk and bring this country back to where it's supposed to be so that generations yet unborn will be proud to say, okay, we all made mistakes, but fix it. So don't blame anybody. Don't blame your governor. Don't blame your local co council chairman and everything. It's your fault, my fault. Until we roll up our sleeves and walk and fix it. Everywhere I've gone around Nigeria, I've gone to Sakweto, I've gone to Kaduna, I've gone to Bauchi, I've gone to Yenagoa, Niger Delta. Everywhere I've traveled, I talk to the youths and they are amazed. Oh, how come you are not here? Hmm. Back home. Yes. All right, so we'll come to that. Um, my producer says to me that Nigerians are eager to join this conversation. So the telephone lines are open now. We have the dedicated lines. You just look at your screen, you see the numbers. If you want to make a voice call, you want to enjoy the sonorous voice, you know, of Tony Yatado, yeah, then make a voice call. I know some of my old colleagues, maybe you're hanging there in the wings somewhere. You want to <laughs> talk to your brother again. Why not? So, okay, uh, make a voice call so that you can talk to him. Or if you are having drop calls, you know, you just warned us now about network issues. So don't let's bring the network issues to the table. We have two lines dedicated for SMS. So go in there, drop your SMS message. That is if you don't have data. If you have data, drop into our WhatsApp number so that uh, Tony Oyatado can then listen to what you have to say, whether you agree with him or you think he's just been too optimistic. Now, it is estimated yes. 
that uh, we have about 120 to 130 million youths making up the 200 million Nigerians that we have right now. Yes. Now, some people have the opinion that if we have that number of vibrant and energetic citizenship, can't we strategically employ that to make the country one of the greatest, like you're saying? Is it not possible for us to deploy more attention to what we can, how we can convert our youth to become, you know? It's very, very possible. Now, therein lies the problem. You have close to 200 million youths begging for people to invest in them. Yeah, invest in them. Facebook that all of you are interested in today, all Mark Zuckerberg got was an idea, and people invested in them. Here, Facebook is all over the world. He didn't, he didn't come out with billions. Billionaires, millionaires, business people invested in him. These yes. youths you are talking about right now are looking for people like you and I to invest in them. But here we are, we are busy buying Mercedes Benzes and private jets. And private jets, parking lots of cars in our backyard that we will never drive in another hundred years. Meanwhile, God in his infinite mercy has given these youths unmerited favor by giving them visions to bring Nigeria forth. But they cannot use their teeth. They need the help of you and I, our wherewithal, to make these visions a reality. We, on our own part, Fola and I, we are doing ours in our own little ways that we can, but we need the entire general public do something with this youths, invest in this youths, so there will be peace in this great nation called Nigeria. Excuse me, is that, are you, is that a, a slight or a, 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 a subtle reference to NSAS business? How did you react to the NSAS in America? Well, the NSAS business, uh, like I tell people all over the world when they ask me questions like this, we don't point fingers. One second, hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello? Uh -huh. the, the, the brother said that you were all Hello? half the phone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Uh, I'm calling from Yola. My name is Solomon Irmia from Yola. Okay. Fantastic. Go ahead, Solomon. Yes. Yes, uh, but the border said that we have uh, all of us have a fault, but our fault is little. The big people that have that office, their fault is big more than our own. Okay, okay. Um, again, unless you tell the same big people your problem, they will not be able to fix it. So they have to know these problems so they can fix it. Just like the pandemic that we have all over the world, the world today. Yes. If your next door neighbor is affected by COVID, you are affected. So any big people, big man that says they are wealthy, but their neighbor is poor, hmm. guess what? They, they are, are poor, poor also. Mm, they are poor. So you can't be just big for name only and mouth only and lip profession, you must be big by investing in the people around you. Who are the people you have invested in to bring them up to prosperity? Hmm. That is the fundamental question. Every leader in this nation should answer. Who are the people that you have invested in to become millionaires? Hmm. Have people brought ideas to you for you to invest in them? And you steal the idea? Okay. Uh, Professor Iatudo, again, uh, there are so many issues that uh, you have laid on the table. So um, now you have challenged Nigerians now that um, it's not just about pointing fingers. Yes. We also must be solution providers. Yes. Now, the slack, it's like the people have been um, downtrodden for so long yes. that the the, the eagerness, the yes. enthusiasm to take responsibility uh, seem to be overwhelming. Yes. So they are rather beggarly. So when it comes to election time, like we're going to run mm -hmm, it very mm -hmm, soon, mm -hmm. 
um, a cup of gari will just uh, satisfy. So how, how, how do we how do we remove that? Good. Again, I've had this complaints and this problems for decades. Every election circle, people come up with this idea. Uh, how do we stop this? Uh, buying rice, giving to people, uh, giving them uh, a carton of sardines, uh, geisha, and all that for them to vote. Well, guess what? Four years from now, again, you still ask me this problem. But we can stop it right now. Wow. Look every leader in the, the eyes, face. right in their face. If this is what you are going to give to me to eat for this moment, take it and keep it with you. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Then that leader will know that you are a serious follower. But if you just want to satisfy your stomach for this moment, then this circle will continue. But we must stop it. We need good leaders. All of us who are religious, during Ramadan, I am a Christian. I fast with the Muslims. During the time that Christians will be fasting for 40 days, I fast with the Christians. Okay, let's fast for one second. Yes. Um, hello, Maria. Hello. Hello, Maria. Yes, hello. Uh -huh. Okay, we can hear you now. Go ahead. But please, can you turn down the volume of your TV set? Hello. We can hear you, Maria. Go ahead. Yes. Um, good morning. Morning. Uh, should I go? I don't know. Go Are ahead, please. Or what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's about the interview that is going on on Slow's floor. Yes. Uh, I'm really enjoying it, and um, it's my first time, you know, hearing just somebody telling us that um, Christianity, Islam, and everything that we are one, which is true. The problem of the country is also religion is part of it. <laughs> so now, if we know that this imam, anybody calling imam, is still calling God, and he's calling, you know, please, this is what we want to be hearing all the time. Thank you very much. Mr. Wow. Oyatedo, um, God bless him for this wonderful message. I can see that I'm not live because I'm watching it live. But I, please, I don't know if my message will be passed across. Thank you so much. You bring Maria. tears into my eyes. Maria, yeah? Maria may God bless you. May Amen. God bestow his best wishes for you. Everything that your heart desire, may Almighty God, Allah, Jehovah, grant you your wishes. Amen. Thank you for being earnest. Thank Amen. you for listening to this program. What we are telling people all over the world is that when you learn something, pass it around. Everything that you have learned from us, myself and Fala today, share it with your friends and family. Not just sharing foolish stuff on the social media. Mm. Share this good stuff with everybody. So having said that, a religious crisis that we have all over the, the world, world, not just in Nigeria, is lack of knowledge. And so each and every one of us must read and study our Holy Bible, Holy Torah, and Holy Quran. Then we will find out that we are all worshipping one God. Each and every Nigerian that you call yourself a Nigerian and you are carrying a Nigerian passport, not a Katsina passport, not a Yenagoa passport, not an Abeokuta passport, Nigerian passport. So you must love your fellow Nigerians, regardless from where they are. In the United States of America, they don't say, I am from uh, New, York uh, New York City. They say, I'm from America. I'm a United States citizen. So, if we are learning the democracy of the United States of America, why don't you learn the good parts of America? Call yourself proud Nigerian. Even if you are a dual citizen. You are a Nigerian yeah. first. So call yourself a proud Nigerian. Let us build this great nation with peace and love. Then there will be security. Uh, build this nation once again with peace and love. Then there will be prosperity and security. Hello, Helen. 
Hello. Hello. Oh, I hope we have not lost. Oh, boy. I think we lost that call. That was Helen from Egypt. Well, Helen, if you can reach us again, please try. Or just drop your uh, WhatsApp message or SMS message so that um, Professor T can re uh, react to that. Now, uh, something else that just come up to me now is this. Yes. Um, how can we find such passionate citizens like you to also step out and see how that political climate that we're talking about can be changed because what we seem to be enjoying or what we seem to be uh, leading with in Nigeria is you know recycled to leadership and Nigerians are seem a little bit wary of that that uh, the leaders we have are, that have been there before they are, they are coming back again and that military or whatever so how can we break that jinx very very easy if you say okay one second Ellen is back hello okay, good Hello. Hello. Great. You're welcome. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Ellen. Go ahead. Please speak up. Okay. Uh -huh. Hello. Is Mrs. Helen Major for? Mrs. Major for is talking. Okay. Hello. Uh, uh, Madam, please, you need to lower uh, the volume. Please, the are doing. No, please, can you lower the volume of your TV One second. Mr. Major, for one second, please. Can you please lower the volume of your TV set? Lower the volume of your TV set. It's echoing. You have to kill your this volume so you of your know that the person calling Allah is the same thing as the person calling God. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Again, we have traveled all over the northern part of Nigeria. We've been to Yola. So and if I... we can know this and then it will go about uniting us once again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And so we've traveled to Yola, we've gone to Sakwato, we've gone to Kano, we've gone to Meiduguri, and we ask Muslims there, what do you call God in your language? 99.9% .9 of them told us Allah. We said, no. In your language, in Hausa Fulani, Kanuri, the name of God is Obangiji. Allah is Arabic, Arabic word for God. And you see those people, their faces light up, say, kai, 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 kai. This man knows what he's talking about. So we are speaking based on sacred facts with certainty. We don't make up any stories. We are sent by God to bring this fact and this knowledge to the people. And I'm grateful to Almighty God, Allah, for the last caller and all the callers that have been calling. As you can see, 90% of our calls now have been women. Mm. And you said it. There you go. We need more women because women have passion and compassion. Because they carried us in their stomachs for nine months. They know what it the is pain. to feel pain during the pangs of birth. We men don't have that. And so we should try some of our women. So to bring it back to your point, yes. the passion yes. of people like you and I to lead, it's very simple. For those of you watching us, it is incumbent on you to see people like us and say, we want so and so person one second, to be there. One second, Prof. Yes. Tina. Hello, Tina. Hello. 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 Hello, good. You're welcome. Please help us kill the volume of your TV set, please. My the volume of my TV is a zero. Oh, great. Okay, go ahead. Speak on. Speak up. Speak up. Okay. Oh, uh, I really appreciate. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Oh, sure, we can. Go ahead. Okay, I want to thank God for this program. Thank you. I must tell you that the speaker is very, very enlightened. He, he knows the mind of God concerning Nigeria, <laughs> and he knows the mind of the people concerning Nigeria. Uh, he, he is speaking as a Nigerian who has 
is speaking as a Nigerian and is speaking as a man who has the interest of the uh, of the youth at heart. Mm. And I think I know his face on NCA, <laughs> and I've seen this face well over 30 years <laughs> on NCA. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yes. And um, he is the kind of people that have the history of Nigeria at their fingertips. He is a destabilized man. And I wish the people in authority can listen to a mindset like this. Mm. I wish people in Nigeria can actually connect him to either uh, policy making, because mm. it covers the whole interest of a Christian, a Muslim, even a, a pagan. Yes, a traditionalist. He, he, he is seeing, he's seeing Nigeria as human beings. He's not seeing Nigerian as a Muslim, or as a Christian, or as a pagan. He's actually seeing every Nigerian as a human being. And I think a voice like this should be should be made to be a current and a continuous voice. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. For Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, God bless you for those kind words that you have used for us. Uh, we give God the glory. Again. Most people see me preaching all over the world and they say, wait a minute, I thought you were a Christian. Why are you always in Bavari guy and all that? And then people will watch me on television in Sakwato, in Maiduguri and all that. And they say, ah, my prophet is on television. And uh, fellow Muslims will look at and say, you're a prophet, but wait a minute, they say his name is Tony, not Tijani. <laughs> How come he's your prophet? See, it's my prophet because he's speaking sacred facts with certainty and truth. And so, like the call I just called and gave those eloquent messages about me and yourself that what we are doing. Nigeria and the world need more people like us to come out. Uh, they say, why you are risking your life? Why are you going to Nigeria? Why don't you stay in Washington and enjoy? I said, well, somebody got to do it. Mm. And if God has bestowed it upon us to do it, why won't we do, do it? it? We are not afraid. We are only reverently fear God. Hmm. Uh, and when you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you can't be afraid of your neighbor. They say, don't go to the north. They will kill you. When we have gone to the north back and forth, nothing happened to us. They say, don't go to Niger Delta. We have gone to the Niger Delta inside creeks to make peace. Nothing happened to us because they can see directly inside our eyes that we came for good for this great nation called Nigeria. Every leader, I'm begging you, with every fiber of my being, mm. please, Embrace peace. Let's stop the conflict all over this great nation called Nigeria. Let's call our children together and tell them we have made mistakes, but we are prepared to solve and repair these mistakes to lead this great nation with love and peace to bring prosperity and security. Now, uh, but, but that's great. Uh, kudos to you for that again. Yes. But now it is important for us to look at how we can actually measure the KPIs if we're going to have leaders to step out. Yes. Now, so what, what, what would you set out, for instance, particularly for the youths? What should they keep in mind as the key performance indicators they must continually review when they're saying they're going to vote for somebody or they're going to allow somebody to occupy an office? Or what are the basic things they must do? The basic thing you must look for in a leader. One second. Uh, we, have a, we have a message. We have a message. Um, this is, uh, I can't get the name yet, but I think I will get a name later. It says, uh, good day. Looking at the technological inadequacy in Nigeria, how can we cope with global standards in terms of manufacturing to help the nation develop faster? Um, now, can we have the name now? No, I don't have the name yet there, but I'm sure my producer will get the name to me. So how can we help looking at the technological inadequacy in the country? Now, in Europe, in the United States of America, they are begging for God to give them son, S-U-N. Begging. 
so they can use it for solar energy. Whereas Nigeria is blessed with sun. Two, four, seven. And yet, we're not using solar energy. I wrote about this in my book decades ago in 1995. We must invest in solar energy. Free. God has given us this. What are we talking about? So it's because we are not using the things that God has given to us. That's why this country is the it's way it is. Yes, we must work together, pull together. Each and every one of us, we are all blessed differently. My cameraman, your cameraman, your producer, you, myself, God has bestowed it upon us with different gifts. gifts. We must harness those gifts together and work together. A great leader is the leader who gives credit to everybody, not just to himself. Credit to you. Kudos. Uh, that is uh, Professor Tuni Oyatado for you there. I told you before that uh, it's a consummate conversationalist. There is no way you're going to spend one day with him that you not go away with several things. So my producer is saying that I have to go away from here. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to stay here till tomorrow. Thank you so much for Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, we hope to have you again. Please. As soon as you come back, yes. please, let's uh, ignite this uh, uh, political, you know, discussion. So we will. We and before, before you end your program, for all of you watching us out there, please, I want you to give Fola Martins a round of applause. He's been a very, very hospitable host. May God bless him. Amen. May God continue to protect him, his wife, his children, and his entire family. Amen. I give you kudos. God bless you. Thank, Thank you for a wonderful job. All right. Okay. We always say on this show, the conversation is never over with us. So just go to our social media lines and um, go and add your own comments or your opinions or your queries to what um, Professor Tony Oyatodo already has shared with us here. We will backlink to him so that from Washington, D.C., he might be able to even respond to some of the things Absolutely. we are talking about. So until then, it is bye from us.